We hear of them all the time when it comes to sports. Sport-related concussions have become a thing of the norm, as many young men and women have suffered some long-lasting effects due to what can be a serious traumatic brain injury. Recently, a local story from right here in Ontario made the New York Times when the Halton District School Board decided that they would create curriculum surrounding the issue of concussions and other traumatic brain injuries, a move that many feel will lead the way to more school boards doing the same thing. Joining me today to discuss the issue of sport-related concussions are Rebecca Richardson, the Instructional Program Leader for Health and Physical Education at the Halton District School Board, Dr. Dave Dorian, a certified complete concussion management practitioner, and Brett Schenk, who has endured seven concussions. Welcome to you all. Thank you. So, Rebecca, I want to start with you. When you heard, first of all, congratulations on this great coverage of this issue. Why did the Halton District School Board decide to take this active stance in basically bringing this to the forefront? It started about three years ago when my colleague Joanne Walsh met with Dr. Paul Eklund at the concussion, uh, International Concussion Symposium in Niagara Falls. Uh, they were having a discussion over lunch talking about how can we um, change the culture mm -hmm. and what's happening and education is the place to do it. Uh, so we wanted to focus on our students, uh, giving them the skills that they need, and it's a perfect fit in our health and uh, health and physical education curriculum. You, you talk about changing the culture. What is the culture currently? Um, the culture currently, and I think it actually has already changed, is that you know when you have a concussion, you get back up, you you know knock it knock it off, and go back in. And uh, unfortunately, we know that too many kids are suffering. Brett is a great example of. It's just it's it has to stop. We have to start thinking about it, and we need to take the time that it needs to recover. And once kids have that chance and they understand, uh, then they can get back in the game and be even more successful. Dr. Doran, tell us exactly what a concussion is and how does it affect a brain, especially a young brain? Um, a, a concussion is actually um, defined as a mild traumatic brain injury. And a lot of people don't uh, think of it as a brain injury. And when you, you actually use the proper term, it's, it seems to be a little more severe than people think. Mm. Uh, so I like to actually tell people it's a mild traumatic brain injury. It actually is a brain injury. And what happens is it, it's caused from a um, rapid deceleration or acceleration or a quick movement of, of the brain. Um, if you think of uh, your brain made up of millions and millions of, of nerves uh, called neurons, and they're, they're long and they're elastic, they almost look like long strips. And if it's like an elastic band, if, if when I move, the front end of the nerve moves and the back end catches up to it, mm. just like an elastic, okay. right? Yep. If I pull that elastic too quickly, the back end doesn't have enough time to catch up, and along the middle, you'll get some tearing. Wow. Uh, and so what happens is uh, you get tearing within these nerves. And when that happens, it creates a, uh, a, chain, pro a chain reaction process that uh, creates a, um, dysfunction within the brain. So it's actually a metabolic, it's called a metabolic injury. Um, so you don't actually see it. It's not structural damage. It, it's how your brain functions. And it can lead to a lot of different signs and symptoms. And so, you know, with Brett's story of seven concussions, that one tear, does that continue to expand? What happens? Um, normally the concussions actually will resolve uh, on their own. Uh, what a lot of times happens is people either get a concussion and don't know they have one, um, and thus you get hit again, and that's very dangerous. Most of the time, when we see major traumas uh, on television, you see these guys who get injured and have these really negative effects. More than likely, they either had a concussion already without knowing it, or they were coming back from a previous concussion uh, probably too soon. And, uh, and with that second hit, the worst called second impact syndrome, is really when you see the, the really detrimental effects, um, such as death or permanent uh, nerve damage. Uh, when isolated and treated properly, they actually heal up. Uh, and uh, you, when you have a concussion and you heal properly, the next one actually doesn't compound onto the uh, original one. That's what the current studies say. Um, but again, most people are taking two or three hits in a short period of time uh, on a non-healed brain, and that's when you see all the, the bad effects. Brett, was that kind of your experience? Yeah, I can't remember the exact timeline, but the, between the first and second, it was very close, and then they kind of came in clumps after that. Mm. And so hearing about the Halton District School, School Board and what they want to do, do you think that would have made a difference if there were some rules and curriculum and education put when it, when it comes to concussions? Yeah, like the first one I was in high school and in a volleyball game, and I went back in a couple of points later, and then until I collapsed for a second time in the same match, they took me to the hospital. Wow. And I don't even think I missed a game. Like, I was playing again the next game, so. Was there, did you feel pressure to go back, or why? 
Yeah, like we weren't very deep in the position I played, and so we just didn't have sub substitutes for the mm -hmm. position I played, so yes. Yeah. So Rebecca, when you hear Brett's story, that's kind of what you want to stop. We want to prevent that, yeah. right? We were in the uh, intervention phase, always dealing with kids that had concussions, and now we want to go back and, and educate kids as well as their parents. Um, and part of our curriculum is to help those kids problem solve and have advocacy skills for themselves and others. So if it's not them that's happened to, but a teammate, that they can say, no, I think you need to get checked out. So uh, in the article, um, there's a lot of mention of reversing the peer pressure. Correct. Talk about that. Right. Um, so it's making the kids more aware and take more accountability for themselves. Um, and also part of our, our education is with the teachers and our coaches and they understand the detriments that this can have, especially on children. Uh, we see it in the classroom and that's where it's been really affecting our students. So we've even taken it back to that return to learn piece where kids are affected from playing, but when they come back to the classroom and are still suffering co from concussion systems, they're not learning. They don't know, uh, and they don't know how to speak up for themselves, so we're taking it back to the kids and letting the kids learn and speak up for themselves. And in, in result, we've seen lots of parents um, that have been thankful for the, the education and little kids. So we go from grade three, grade six, and grade nine. Those are the ages that we're targeting because at those ages, um, different activities that they're participating in, and obviously when you get into high school, you have those more higher risk sports. Dr. Dorian, what are some key points or things that parents need to look for? You know, I mean, many, uh, many parents have their children in several activities. I mean, parents also have to be alert about this as well and be uh, advocates for their children. Absolutely. I think there's this mentality, uh, Rebecca hit on it again, as it, I used to have concussions as kids and, and I, I dealt with it and I turned out fine. Mm. Uh, I think concussions are kind of the same as drinking and driving. Kind of people, you say, oh, I used to do that and it was kind of laughed about and now it, no one would ever think to drink and drive now. So it's changing that stigma. At home, the things you want to look for are the, bigger, the big things after a hit, you want to rule out major things. Um, just above concussions, things like hemorrhages and bleeding, yeah. uh, things like that. So uh, I say people always want to know, when do I send my kid to the ER? Yeah. Um, and that's the things we want to look for are headaches that are getting worse, uh, liquid, clear liquid coming from their nose or their ears, uh, inability to stop vomiting, uh, inability to stay awake at all. They're, they're like, I mean, you're going to be tired with a concussion, but the ability to, you're crashing. And, mm -hmm or when the symptoms keep getting worse and worse. There's usually about a 36 hour delay um, because a concussion uh, eats away a lot of energy. It, it uses a lot of energy. You might not get the energy uh, depletion until the next day. So a lot of people will feel fine. They'll be riding that, that high during a game and that's why it's important to take them out right away. They might feel perfectly fine at the game. Uh, and then 12 hours, 36 hours after the, uh, the injury, that's when their symptoms really come out. And you're gonna see things like uh, grogginess and, and a lot with high school kids specifically, what do they get when they're tired basically? So they're gonna be cranky, they're gonna be irritable, they're gonna be more emotional, see uh, uh, crying bouts. Uh, not to mention balance issues and dizziness and difficulty concentrating. Lights, lights like this would uh, affect them as well. So uh, I think as soon as you have any cause of concern, you bring them and see a medical professional and they can, they can diagnose a concussion because we also wanna look at whiplash, right? Whiplash and concussions go go hand in hand. And, and about long-term effects, right? So a parent might say, okay, you know, my child's suffering through these things, but now they're fine. Or they look at Brett and they say he's fine. So what are some long-term effects that can... Well, there's, I mean, it's still, it's still uh, new, uh, concussion research. I mean, it's become a, definitely a, a, a topic point in the last five years, but you have to remember, um, once it becomes kind of public knowledge, everyone wants to know about it, it takes years for research to come out and to understand the long-lasting effects. Uh, early studies indicate that there's uh, conditions, uh, chronic encephalopathy, where brain swelling, uh, they're linking it to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's mm. disease. Um, again, this is all very recent research, but it's still, it's, it's permanent stuff. Uh, so more research is, is under, underway right now. Uh, I think if you were to look at the amount of research studies taking place on concussions, uh, they've probably uh, tripled and actually probably a hundredfold from what it was 10 years ago. But interpreting that data is gonna take a lot of years. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next you know, four to five years with regards to interpreting all the data. Brett, tell us a little bit about your story. I know you shared it with Moira, but seven concussions through different uh, different things, different sports, different activities that you've been a part of. Tell us about that journey. Yeah, like 
like you said, it was very different from the beginning to the end in terms of what society knew about it. From the first concussion, they sent me home with an Advil mm. and just thought, they just said, take it easy sort of thing. Um, and by the end, like I was going through all of the protocols, identifying all the symptoms. And, uh, but it was almost like it was a little bit too late because- And what were some of those symptoms that you were- Exactly what he just said, yeah. like you got dizziness, uh, can't stay awake, uh, balance issues, irritability, like all, all the emotional things as well. And the only symptom I didn't have was nausea. Hmm. And so was that a culture that you saw with your other teammates that people just got up, brushed themselves off and yeah, like back you, out? Yeah, you try your best to ignore it. And I actually got really good at masking it so I could go in public for a day and people couldn't tell. And then I'd crash for I don't, several days or a week. So, so now, do you, in speaking to other people and, and being on the show and so forth, what have you learned from having all of these concussions that you can then imp, you know, tell other people about? Yeah, well, patience is a big thing. Like, don't re-injure yourself. As you mentioned before, if you, if you injure yourself twice in a row, then you have lasting effects. And uh, really, just don't get down because it, it does end. Mm. Um, you don't necessarily know when it will be. And it, just try not to put a timetable on it. Like, it's not like a broken arm where you can say it's better in six weeks or. Yeah. So Rebecca, when when we're looking at the curriculum, and um, I mean, I've, I actually just received a letter from my son's school, um, saying that they are their district school board is going to start teaching about uh, about concussions as well. So, definitely, people are other school boards are taking the lead and saying this is an important issue. Yes, they are. Um Part of the reason for that is the uh, PPM 158 the ministry released about a year ago. It's a policy memorandum that all school boards will have a concussion protocol in place. Uh, and that is looking at uh, not only the identification, but the management. So we used to just look at kids coming back to physical activity. Now we're looking at the return to learn. So kids that are diagnosed with concussion, when they come back to school, they're going to be on a modified program. Uh, we're going to look for signs and symptoms that continue uh, and seek medical support. So in Halton, we have a concussion collaborative that's going to be looking at that pathway to care idea. So how do kids seek that support that they need? One of the biggest things, and, and Brett can attest to it, is um, that it's an invisible injury and so the mental health pieces and thinking that you know it might only be a couple weeks a couple of months but to a kid playing a sport that can be a lifetime um, so that's our biggest piece too is, is really educating those kids that it's this short little piece and it's worth your health for the rest of your life and educating parents as well huge and that's that's a component of it the protocol also requires a, a parent education piece so most school boards on their parent website will have all of that as long as well as the forms and we're also seeing it in community sport organizations as well so it's really a provincial piece and it's going it's going across the country and if parents or people watching want to find out more about what you guys are doing where could they sure they that? can go to the sport concussion library it's a uh, sportconcussionlibrary.com and right at the top of that page is the Halton Concussion uh, Education Program right. and all of our contact information is there and the resource is free. It's open to any school board. Uh, we have school boards contacting us from across the country and the states right now to use it and it's absolutely free to use, easy to implement uh, and lots of positive feedback from kids. This is great. Thank you so much all of you for joining us today, Rebecca, David, or Dr. Dorian, and uh, Brett, thanks again. An important conversation to have, I think one that we need to, especially as parents, I think watching who have children involved in sports, uh, to be aware of just these hidden, hidden things that can happen with concussions. Thanks again. Thank you.